Stephen Lynch. Greg Burns. Ross Bennett. First, Curtis Walker. Uh, black, there's a lot of stereotypes around black people, you know? You wake up in the morning, you leave your house, and you, you don't acknowledge your blackness until somebody, and usually an old white lady, grabs her purse a little bit closer to her. <laughs> as she sees you, she says, oh, no. And I want to walk up and say, excuse me, I'm working. I don't need your purse. I have a career. I'm doing things, OK? But I usually end up just hitting her in the head and... <laughs> I'm playing. My parents raised me with discipline. Remember that word? Discipline. In England, they've changed the law now. You can't beat your children. Smack. West Indians say beat. English people say smack. We're not allowed to smack them. Might I suggest any parents here? Yeah. Might I suggest parents, and you didn't hear this from me, but while you are, if you're gonna reprimand your child, might I suggest the elbow? <laughs> because we're not allowed to leave bruises, okay? And the elbow is great, as you can do it as an accident. As you're walking past, just gently, <laughs> oh, <laughs> did I get you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Now maybe next time you put the rubbish out when I ask you, won't you? <laughs> Just gently. Don't go mad, OK? Because I've got children, and I admire parents that can talk to their children. Talk to their children. It's fantastic. You see them in the park. Tarquin, come here. Tarquin, come here. Fuck off, ma'am. <laughs> oh. Yes, Tarquin. F off, but why? <laughs> Are you angry? Can we talk? Not my parents. My parents were so strong. We lived in a three-story house when I was growing up. Seven years old, my father would be in the kitchen downstairs, and I'd be upstairs in my bedroom, top floor. My father called you once. If he calls you twice, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, it's funny now, but not at the time, all right? <laughs> There's a thing like, Curtis! Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> that was good, you fat bastard. That was really good. <laughs> Terrified of my father. We've lost the plot now. We could be there all day with our children. Timmy! Come on, Timmy, I mean it! Don't make me have to! <laughs> have to what? We never finished that. What, what, what? So bad nowadays, we have to text our kids. Get downstairs at kitchen wash up, lazy boy. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> I've got children now. Love them dearly. Just to show how things have changed. Christmas just gone. My son asked me to buy him a scooter, a motorized bike, 16 years old. And I thought, wow. I remember growing up, if I'd asked my parents for a tennis ball, <laughs> there would have been a national inquiry. <laughs> you want a whole ball? <laughs> a whole ball for yourself? <laughs> you selfish little shit. <laughs> my son wants a scooter. So I got him a scooter, but he got upset because it had a Pizza Hut box on the back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you start work tomorrow, you little shit. <laughs> Spoiled brats. Mobiles. Kids got mobiles now. Seven years old. All right, excuse me, can you pass me the rubber, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Hey. Horrible. My children want pets. I'm never really good with pets. I think it's being raised in a West Indian household, you know? We're not really good with animals. I had a cat called TC. <laughs> and I remember coming down, you know, loving this cat, coming down to the kitchen and shh, 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 TC, TC. And my father coming down and saying, what you doing? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just calling the cat, Dad. Don't bother, the cat dead. <laughs> that was it. Cat dead. That's why I wish I was born into a white family, because I know you'd all do it differently. You'd be like, Curtis, come, come here. <laughs> now there's a place. <laughs> there's a place that cats go to <laughs> called Patty Heaven. <laughs> it's a <wonderful> of it. <laughs> Not my father, boy. The cat dead. <laughs> I called him once, he didn't come, well, that's it. <laughs> so 
So my life is good. I just turned 50 years old. Thank you. I'm at that age when I'm starting to make noises when I don't want to make noises. I do any kind of work around my house. I make two noises. One noise when I do the work, another noise about a second later. Sounds like I'm thinking about the work that I just did. I'll show you. Watch this right here. Ah! Huh. <laughs> you come home at the end of the day, you sit in your favorite chair at the end of the day. Ah! Ah! Ooh! I make noises doing the most insignificant and minuscule physical tasks. Adjusting the thermostat on the wall. You'll hear me at the thermostat. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a dial. I'm twisting a dial. And it's funny, my dad would make the same noises when he would adjust the thermostat, but then he'd always look over his shoulder at me. My father would go like this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. I think my father thought that I was somehow hooked up to the thermostat. And if he was to get the temperature right, I'd become the son he wanted. Uh-huh, there you go. I should do it. No, he's still there. You know, like my dad, my dad was a uh, Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel a veteran of World War II. My father was in World War II. My grandfather, World War I. I enlisted in the Army out of high school. I just missed Vietnam, but I was in time for my country's war on drugs. <laughs> All right, technically, I fought for the other side. <laughs> OK, I make a few jokes about drinking and taking drugs. I got to be honest with you. I do not drink or take drugs anymore. I stopped all of that in the early 80s when discos were popular. <laughs> discos helped me. And I see a few disco veterans here. A few disco veterans here. Discos helped people of my generation stop drinking. Because they would have carpeting on the floor. And for sound insulation, they'd put the same carpeting on the walls. <laughs> now think about it. Carpeting on the walls of a bar. How can you tell when you're falling down drunk? <laughs> I'll be right back. I get a little help down here. <laughs> so I'm from this rural town in western New York State. I actually own a log cabin. Is that how stereotypical is that of a of a hick American? I have a log, I built it myself from a kit. <laughs> That's how you build a log cabin. The days of chopping down your own trees and holding them together with beaver shit are over. <laughs> it's the 21st century. You want a log cabin, you order it out of a catalog. They delivered my house unassembled in a giant cardboard box. Took me a week just to get the parts to my house out of the box. I was so tired, I started living in the box. <laughs> But I painted it, because I'm not white trash. <laughs> and I'm an environmentalist. I use, I use solar heating in my house. If you don't know how solar heating works, it's like a greenhouse. You put some plates of glass up in your roof, and the sunlight will come through and warm the air of your house. I wanted to turn the heat up one year. I replaced a plate of glass with a seven and a half foot industrial magnifying glass. <laughs> Keeps the house toasty. <laughs> One minor problem, you must stay out of my living room at 2.30. <laughs> I have what appears to be a laser beam. <laughs> Comes in next to my coffee table. <laughs> what the hell is that? Got a laser beam in my living room. I used to have a dog. <laughs> How do you think I feel? A little dog, Chester. Old curious Chester. 
One of those dogs, they see something, they jump on it and play with it. You know the kind of dog. They see a dust ball, a sock, sometimes a 50,000 degree spot of light. He must have played with that spot next to the coffee table for almost a second. Only time I ever heard him say, I, uh, I don't like to judge audiences, but some of you are a bunch of pussies. It's a comedy show. Just making it all up, just having fun. There's no dog. It's a joke. There's no dog. There's no log cabin. Not even from New York. I live in fucking New Jersey. I was in Australia last year, right? Now, now, Australia was great, right? But what I didn't like about Australia was the beaches. Now, the beaches themselves were lovely, but they were full of very fit, tanned Australian people, and that just pissed me off. Because <laughs> I'm an Englishman, therefore I have an Englishman's body. And I've got that very unique kind of Englishman's body that only Englishmen can have. Look, on any beach in the world, only Englishmen can be skinny and flabby at the same time. <laughs> I tell you what's great about Australia. I think I think we could learn from this in Britain. Is I love how proud Australians are. Very proud of their country. Although oddly, what they seem most proud of is the weather. <laughs> it's like the novelty still hasn't worn off. <laughs> if you go to Australia with a British accent, as soon as they hear your accent, they can't shut up about the weather. They're like this. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, gorgeous, beautiful. Australians talk about the weather the way most people talk about newborn babies. I bet some of them carry pictures around in their wallet. When an Australian says, would you like to see a picture of our son? They literally mean it. <laughs> Tell you the best thing about my trip to Australia, right? On the way back from Australia, I got upgraded from economy class to business class, which was brilliant, right? But I couldn't help wonder, how annoyed must the people in business class be that have paid for a business class ticket knowing there's upgraded people amongst them? <laughs> they must hate that. I bet they're sitting like this going, Who's the upgraded people? <laughs> Who are the upgrades? They're not like us. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the upgrades? And we're not hard to spot, because we're the people that spend the first three hours of the flight going, look, I can't even touch the seat in front of that. <laughs> business class, you still get aching muscles, these ones. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going back to Australia in the summer. Now I've tasted business class. It's going to be hard back in economy. You've got to make the most out of everything in life, don't you? So I'll be like this, right? I'll be back in economy. I'll be like this. I'll be like, it's all right. Economy's OK. I've done it before. Economy's fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm only here for a day. <laughs> I'll just recline my seat. There we go. <laughs> Very comfy. For a day. <laughs> and then they've got the cheats can't be ended the flight. Excuse me, sir, we're about to land. Could you put your seat up, right? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> we can land now, can we? <laughs> and you know, they treat you like a king in business class, right? You got everything. You got seats to go back. You got all the films you could want to see. I tell you the film I saw. Remember the guy that made Sixth Sense? I see dead people. <laughs> Did anyone see his next one, The Village? Yeah. Rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah. When that little kid goes, I see village people. <laughs> a traffic cop and a red Indian come floating down the road. Why is that scary? <laughs> but they treat you like a king, right? You got all the films. You got seats to go back. You got food. You got champagne. But then I spotted another curtain. First class. I'm like, what have they got in first class? Lap dancing? <laughs> Do you know what they've got in first class now? They've got beds. They've got beds in first class. If you paid £12,000 to fly first class, would you want to sleep? Not me. <laughs> I'm like, this is first class. Bring out the cocaine. I'm not missing any of this. <laughs> I think the only reason to pay all that money, get a bed and fly first class, is if you want to join the Mile High Club. 
And by the way, going to Australia from the UK, perfect way to join the Mile High Club. Think about it, 23 hours. You're bound to grind someone down. <laughs> I'll tell you why I've got the Mile High Club obsession. In the UK, a couple of years ago, do you remember this? The Mile High Club couple. They were fantastic, complete strangers. They'd never met each other before. In the middle of the flight, they caught the woman giving the bloke oral sex. Here's a weird thing. They arrested them, charged them with air rage. <laughs> Which one was angry? <laughs> so I can pretty much guarantee it, it wasn't the bloke. <laughs> Come think about it, I've never heard a woman go, I'm so mad I could suck a cock. <laughs> what a world that would be. <laughs> no, you really are teaching me a lesson this time. <laughs> no, 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 I'll never stay out late again. <laughs> I'm never going out again. I'm just going to stay in and annoy you. <laughs> oh, no, not red wine on the new carpet. <laughs> I'm going to get such a telling off. <laughs> How many uh, Catholics do we have here tonight? Yeah. That's way too fucking many. <laughs> and right in the front. Good. This is going to be really uncomfortable. <clears throat> All right. This one's just for you. In prayer, my cross to bear, I kneel upon the floor. The temptations of a Catholic priest aren't easy to ignore. But I cannot control myself, it rips my soul apart. For one small sheep among my flock has stole the shepherd's heart. Altar boy, altar boy, confess your to me you will find the grace of God inside my rectory <laughs> at Sunday mass or Bible class I catch him in my view so I close my eyes but there he lies spread eagle on the pew and when I see him in that frock I think he looks so fine. I'll drop a couple roofies into his communion wine. Altar boy, altar boy, is it gonna be heaven or hell? You can play my organ all night long if you promise never to. <laughs> Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. If he thinks the second coming is bad, then the third one's gonna be insane. Oh, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from sin. We could pretend that he was Jesus Christ and I was Mary Magdalene. Altar boy, altar boy, confess your sin to me yeah. you will find the grace of God inside my rectory yeah. altar boy oh, altar boy confess your sins to me you will find the grace of God inside Ah. 
sorry. I'm never gonna be on TV again. I might as well fucking finish it now. Though. Or should I not? It's up to you guys. All right, fuck it. All right, no, no, no. You will find the girls who got us on my wreck. 